Christine here. I wanted um, to read a couple things from a couple different books to give you guys an idea. Um, I wanted to, sorry, talk about, uh, read a little bit from Complex PTSD from Surviving to Thriving because it is the absolutely best book that any of us could read um, coming out of an emotional relationship or if you just kind of want to understand why you make the choices that you make and they're not always the best for us. Um, and I also wanted to read from Codependence Anonymous. I guess that's just all it's called. Um, but we call it the Blue Book because it's like the Blue Book of Alcoholics Anonymous. They, they call theirs the Blue Book, so we call ours the Blue Book because this is... Um, keep in mind that I'm not any kind of therapist. I'm just a chick who's been through some shit and is not afraid to talk about it. Um, I, I suggest that you do get a good therapist, and I know it's kind of hard, but try to find someone that understands personality disorders. You know, um, you can call this person before you make them your therapist, or you know, you can call and talk to them for a few minutes and, and, and tell them, Yeah, I know I, I'm dealing with myself, but I'm coming out of a relationship. Or I was married to someone with a personality, I believe to be a personality disorder, and I need help working through that. And if they don't know what they're talking about, and they're just like, well, um, oh, it's hard to hear me. Oh, sorry, thank you. <laughs> Is that better? Sorry, I always forget that part. I don't know where my microphone is. Can you hear me better now? Someone please give me a thumbs up so I'm not just chatting away and no one can hear me. Better? Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, so yeah, when you get a therapist, chat with them first. I always do that. It took me a year to find my therapist calling people and a lot of times they'd be like, well, we're not going to talk about them. We're going to talk about you. I'm like, yeah, no shit, but you need to understand it's a very specific thing. Do you understand post-traumatic stress disorder? Do you understand complex post-traumatic stress disorder? Um, so anyways, that's what I would recommend you do. And I know it's hard to find a good one. It's hard to find someone who understands, but it's worth it when you do find one. Um, I don't know which to do first. I'll read from Complex PTSD from Surviving to Thriving by Pete Walker. And if you don't have, if you want one book, that's going to help you, it's this one. It's available on Amazon. Uh, I wish he would do an audio just because I like audios, but he has not. So it is what it is. Um, I'm going to read from page three, the definition of complex PTSD. <sighs> CPTSD is a more severe form of post-traumatic stress disorder. It is delineated from this better known trauma syndrome by five of its most common and troublesome features. Emotional flashbacks, toxic shame, self-abandonment, a vicious inner critic, and social anxiety. Is that or is that not what we go through? I believe that it is. Hmm. Uh, okay. Before I go any further, I was trying to, well, not trying to, I set up a Patreon, but I haven't done a big, you know, deal about it because I don't know if I have the time to devote to it uh, like I want. So I think what I'm going to do is wait till the semester's over and, and hit it a little bit harder and let you guys know all the stuff that I'm offering. And my main concern, my main, the main thing that I want to do with Patreon and you guys is have like a Zoom or a, or a Skype type of thing where we're all together and talking about this shit so that you know that you're not alone and so that you can hear from other people. It'll be kind of like this, but it'll be, you know, longer and, and more, it'll be private. Not everybody can join. So, um, and I will be vetting the people that join because I can determine, I can pretty much tell when someone is off and I'm not going to let people who are off stay in our group. 
Thank you. Okay. Speaking of that, the tension in my body, um, I'm working on my, um, my complex pain. And one of the things I do, um, because of my neck surgery and all the stuff that's going on with my neck is, is I crouch. So I don't know if you see me go like this, that's why I'm just reminding myself to, to sit up straight, um, to, to try to realign myself. What am I going through? Um, do you mean, if you mean um, physically, I have um, compressed discs and degenerative disc disease. So there's about five or six different things going on with my neck. It's misaligned. Um, there's a lot of grinding. There's stuff sticking out uh, in the back. The bones are just, I don't know. I don't know what caused it or how to describe it, but they're, they're just m messed up. So I was supposed to have my surgery and um, then I got a blood clot in my leg. So I decided not to have my surgery and I still have the blood clot. And so uh, I don't know if I shared all this before, if you guys are interested, but that's, that's what I'm going through with that. And I also have the, the stuff with my, in my lower back, the um, degenerative discs and bulging and all that kind of shit. So I try to stay away from medication and I try as best I can and I try to um, use holistic methods to try to heal. Um, so anyways, that's that stuff. All right. So I'm going to read what emotional flashbacks are just so you guys have an idea. If you don't already know, emotional flash flashbacks are perhaps the most noticeable and characteristic feature of CPTSD survivors of traumatizing abandonment are extremely susceptible. Wait, are extremely susceptible, I think the word in here is wrong, uh, to painful emotional flashbacks, which unlike PTSD, do not typically have a visual component. Emo um, by the way, thank you. How did I deal with the emotional healing? Um, let me finish this um, paragraph and then I will answer your questions. Okay. Um, do, do, do. These uh, emotional flashbacks are I don't know if I read this, so I'll, I'll do it again. Emotional flashbacks are sudden and often prolonged regressions to the overwhelming feeling states of being abused ab an abused, abandoned child. These feelings can include overwhelming fear, shame, alienation, rage, grief, and depression. They also include a necessary triggering of our fight flight instincts. It is important to state here that Emotional flashbacks, like most things in life, are not all or none. Flashbacks can range in intensity from subtle to horrific. They can also vary in duration, ranging from moments to weeks on end, where they devolve into what many therapists call a regression. Okay, that's all about that. So when you experience this stuff, the, th the thing that's helpful for me in, this, in these books is to know that there's words that go along with what I'm feeling and um, that I'm not the only one experiencing it. Um, so that's why I recommend this. If you want to understand what you're going through, um, this is the book. Okay, so how do I deal with the emotional healing? That's kind of what I was going to talk about as a matter of fact. And it's not just one answer. And that's the thing. If you're like me, you want someone to tell you, okay, this, these are the steps to take, and then you'll feel better. And there are some things um, that, that you can find in that book that will help, definitely will help you do that. But it's not a, just a one, it's not just a one time thing. You know, it's, it's a change of life. We're kind of different people now. And for me, it's, I have to constantly remind myself of the things that I need to do to, to heal. And if I don't remember them, I go right straight back down. And it's, it, my depression is a real thing. It's lame. <laughs> I don't like it. So I just have to remember to keep, keep reading or keep meditating or, you know, do the things that, that work for you. Um, I'm now going to read from Codependence Anonymous Blue Book. This is a story um, we read last night, and it's a really, really good one. There's a lot to relate to. It's called God, Please Help Me. Um, 
And this book, you can find it used. I always look at in that section at the used bookstore to see if there's anything good. Um, but otherwise, I think it's about $15 new if, if you get it at a meeting. Which Okay, let's explain what Codependence Anonymous is real quick. Um, it's basically uh, a group of people who want to have better relationships with themselves and others. That's all it is. And there's no shame in that. I think... People are used to being embarrassed uh, about not being perfect. And if, if you want help, if you want to get better, there are things and meetings and places and people out there that can help you. And um, Codependence, Codependence Anonymous is one of those things. It's, it's meetings. And you can go to coda, C-O-D-A dot org. And kind of read about what what it's about. And there's also a button you can click um, to find meetings in your area. And it's really helpful. And I love to see new me new people come to our meetings. Um, and I'm just hopeful that, that everybody gets everything they need out of it. And it's nice to, to hear other people talk about their stories. It's that I think that's probably my favorite part. So I know that I'm not alone. I'm experiencing PTSD, depression, and extreme feelings of rage at several things that remind me of what I went through. That's normal. It feels bad how the new relationship this one, suffers because somebody else fucked up. Well, you got to heal yourself. I mean, that's easier said than done, and that's just one sentence. But as you heal, as you grow, your partner will heal and grow with you. Um, you are where you are in your journey, and if they can't accept that, then it's not the right time for them. But I understand what you're saying, absolutely. Um, but that healing and that trust and that rage and all that stuff, you can work through it. And as you work through it, all of your relationships will get better. And, uh, and I totally suggest you check out Codependence Anonymous or Coda.org. And, and see, you know, what, what their idea, well, what codependence is, a lot of people think it's just that clingy, needy person who won't shut up and just need you to make them feel better. That's not what codependency is. Codependency is a whole list of stuff and a whole list of um, traits and things that we do. And I, I, I've always thought that everyone is a little bit codependent or a lot codependent it's just something that we all were we weren't right nobody was raised by perfect parents but there are a lot of people who who were raised by good enough parents and that's awesome but most of us weren't um we were either neglected or abandoned or just not respected and blah 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 and we need to heal that stuff and you need to find a way that works for you to heal it um i've got several things that I do because I need several things. That's just, I lived a long time with this stuff in my head and I have a lot to heal. So I, I search out things that, that I respond to in healing. My new partner is by God's grace, a very sweet soul and very understanding. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So he's, he's just there or she's just there. They've got your back. And just do the work. Do what you need to do. Seek out what works for you. And know that they'll be there for you. That's wonderful. We all need some support, whether it's a lover, a partner, or a friend, or a teacher, or a therapist, or coach, or whatever. And so I'm really glad that you have that. I'm going to read just one paragraph um, from this woman's story and then talk a little bit about what it means to me. Um, okay, uh, this program, this is page 163 in this edition. The program, meaning Codependence Anonymous, also taught me what humility is. I couldn't go any further unless I made myself teachable to new ways of living. That was the hard part. I learned that what I said, did, thought, and felt was not in alignment. So it was like being a baby in an adult body, learning how to walk again. There were thousands of old tapes in my head running my life. The trick was to identify the tapes and put boundaries in place. That's pretty hard to do when there's no trust for others. 
And I would add to that when we don't trust ourselves, because I think that's a huge part of a huge block. I would, I guess I'd say in our healing, we don't trust ourselves. We don't know, are we doing the right thing? Are we doing the healthy thing or not? You know, can I trust this person or not? Do, do I know how to read a person and determine if they're safe for me or not? You know, all that kind of stuff. It's real hard to get beyond that. Um, but we can. There's a lot of different things I would like to break down each of these sentences. Um, but I'm not going to take all that much time. Let me see. I guess I'll choose this one. I learned that what I said, did, thought, and felt was not in alignment. That totally applies to me. Uh, the things I think and the things I feel are not the same. And it's very frustrating for me. Because logically, I can, I think I'm pretty objective. But emotionally, I still have the inner child running the show on a lot of different, you know, in a lot of different ways. And I, I, I can catch it and I, I can recognize when I'm trying to respond and it's the response of a child and I don't want to be like that. So um, it's important to, for me to catch that when it's happening and, and set that boundary with myself of, no, we're not going to be like that. Um, I understand the feelings. I understand why you want to be like that. But this time, let's stop and think about it and take a minute before we respond. Well, hi, everybody coming, coming on. So that's, that's how I do that for me. I think that's what she's talking about um, when she says the trick was to identify the tapes and to put boundaries in place. You have to put boundaries in place with others, but you have to do it with yourself too. And, and that's something I'm trying to teach myself how to do. Like sometimes it is the right response and it's a strong one. And sometimes it's a strong one and it's the response of a child. So I got to determine for myself which it is. And that's kind of um, where I'm at right now is, is figuring out, is it the right response? Do, what do I do with these emotions? But the one thing that I do know is that it's less about other people and more about myself all of it because people are going to be who they are and choose what they choose and it's my job to be myself it's your job to do yourself someone asked um what book is it it's called codependence anonymous and it's it's really good it's filled with lots of stories of people that go through the same kind of stuff that we go through and where they got to on the other side um and I know for a lot of people, like 12 step programs seem weird and like it's a religion or some weird thing. It's not, um, you, whoever your God is, is who your God is. It could be a chair. It could be somebody, you know, an idea, a character named Charlie. It could be anything. Um, so it's just, uh, for me, what I'm learning to do is depend on being humble enough to know that I don't have the answers and I can't and I won't and kind of depending on uh, something else to help me through and to show me what I need to see and and you know to help me help others and and it's hard it's hard to trust something um, that isn't tangible uh, it's hard to trust an idea but I want to and I'm working on it and it's it's been kind of the same struggle um, since I started going over a year ago and my recovery is very much a roller coaster I think like everyone's um, I would like it smooth more often, but at this point, you know, there's lots of ups and downs. And if um, if I'm not on here sharing, that's because I'm I'm going through something, or I just don't feel confident enough to be in front of whoever chooses to to watch it. And that's just real. That's just you know what it is. Been busy, got a lot of stuff like everybody, but I, you know, I think about you guys all the time, and I. Am working on doing something um, that will bring us together in in a real way, in a, in in real life way, because I think that's important. That's something we don't have yet. Um, it'll come, whether it's me or somebody else. 
Um, but I do also believe that we do need groups with, you know, that can, that can talk about it. I think that's really important. That validation is really, really important, especially if you were in a relationship with, or, you know, a parental or family relationship with a narcissist or someone who has any of the uh, cluster B personality disorders and it's not a judgment on them. Like it's hard not to judge a narcissist, but you know, whatever we need for us to get some clarity on what we've been through and what we need to do to heal. So I would, I would love to do that. Um, that's one of the things I want to do in my Patreon. Like I said, is, you know, to bring us together in a way that is, is helpful and validating. So I, I sound like to myself that I'm repeating myself. So I hope that some of the stuff I read today was helpful for you. Again, this is the book I recommend to anyone and everyone. Complex PTSD from Surviving to Thriving by Pete Walker. And it's available on Amazon. And another book that I recommend is Codependence Anonymous. There's another, uh, this is like the one, the official book um, that Cody Pennant used in the meetings. There are also books by um, the author Melody Beattie. And I always get them confused because their name, Pia Melody. Um, really effective, really helpful books on Cody Pennant. So I hope that you got something out of our little meeting today. Um, uh, namaste. I wish you all well, and I thank you for your stories, and I thank you for sharing with me privately or publicly, and, and I wish you the best, and I'm sending you love and light, and you're not alone, and I'll be back when I'm back. Peace. Take care.